Amen. That's for sure. We'll be, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and turn to page 86 tonight in your hymn on there, History of the Hymns. I've gone back and forth on a couple of ideas, and I've learned a lot from, from uh, Brother Dean being my pastor, because, you know, he always says he'll have three or four sermons he's looking at, and he'll preach whichever one burns the most, so. If I wake up in the morning and <laughs> I'm still in my head, sometimes I'll say, hey, let's go in this direction. But uh, let me read you a few verses of Scripture, and then you'll, it'll refresh your memory about the portion of Scripture that this hymn comes from. It's John chapter 20, and we'll read a, f- a few verses there, beginning at verse 1. It says, and you remember this, this is the resurrection in the garden. Remember that? It says, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark under the sepulcher, and seeth a stone taken away from the sepulcher. Now you remember what happens then. She goes and tells the disciples about the stone being rolled back and that kind of of thing. Peter and John come in. They have a look and see an empty tomb. But then we read about uh, Peter and John in verse 10. John John 20 verse 10 says, Then the, the disciples went away again unto their own home. And I love this in the very next verse, in verse 11, the first two words are, but Mary. But Mary stood without. Now look that word up, without. And it it doesn't just mean alone, but it means alone and destitute. See, she thought they've stolen his body. What, What a bunch of no good thugs to do that. But it says she stood without in verse 11 at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said uh, unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. She, She stood without. She was empty. She was destitute. And when she, verse 14 says, And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Now our hymn this week in the garden, both the words and music, was written by a man by the name of C. Austin Miles. Now you might think, why, well, I bet he's some well-known evangelist or pastor or, you know, something like that. He was a pharmacist. <laughs> he was a pharmacist. And later became the editor of Hallmack Publishing, publisher of hymns. Now listen to this. According to Miles' great-granddaughter, the song in the garden was written in a cold, dreary, and leaky basement in Pittman, New Jersey. It was a room that did not even have a window in, nor did it have a view of a garden. And I read that and I thought, well, that is the oddest thing I've ever heard. Why would somebody be writing a hymn or reading their Bible or whatever in such a dark, dreary place such as that? And by the way, let me say this first about In the Garden. Uh, The song was uh, published in 1912 and was popularized during Billy Sunday's evangelistic campaign. So the song has some history. But why was he in some dark, dreary basement with no window? Well, I found the answer in this book uh, that the pastor loaned me. It's uh, Then Sings My Soul, 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories. And over on page 271, uh, the answer came to me. So I went to various sources for information on this. It says uh, this, and this is the author speaking. The art of meditating on scripture involves one's imagination. Instead of simply reading a passage, we must read it, close our eyes, and visualize a scene, perhaps even putting ourself, ourselves in the picture. That's what the author of this very hymn did, Mr. C. Austin Miles. We already told you he was a pharmacist by trade, and he began writing gospel music and eventually became the editor of hymnals and songbooks. He was also a music director at camp meetings, conventions, and churches. But here it is. His hobby was photography, and he found his dark room in the basement with no window, and that's important, in the dark room, perfect for developing not just photographs, but his devotional life. In its privacy and strange blue glow, 
Miles could read the Bible in total privacy. And one day in March of 1912, while waiting for some film to develop, he opened the Bible to his favorite chapter, John chapter 20, which we just read from. And of course, we know, as some call it, the story of the first Easter. And Miles later said, and I'm quoting here, as I read it that day, it, I seemed to be a part of the scene. My hands were resting on the Bible while I uh, stared at the light blue wall. As the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of a garden, looking down a gently winding path, shaded by olive branches. A woman in white with head bowed, hand clasping her throat as if to choke back her sobs, walked slowly into the shadows. It was Mary Magdalene. As she came to the tomb upon which she placed her hand, she bent over to look in and hurried away. John in flowing robe appeared, looking at the tomb. Then came Peter, who entered the tomb, followed slowly by John. As they departed, Mary reappeared, as, uh, as the author says here, Mr. Miles, uh, in, in, as he's uh, imagining this, leaning her head upon her arm at the tomb, she wept. And turning herself, she saw Jesus standing. And he said, in my mind's eye, so did I. I knew it was he. She knelt before him with arms outstretched and looking into his face, cried, Rabboni. I awakened in full light, gripping my Bible with muscles tense and nerves vibrating. Under the inspiration of this vision, I wrote as quickly as the words would be formed in the poem exactly as it had since appeared. That same evening, he says, I wrote the music. And in addition, I might point this out that Austin Miles is the author of several other songs that we sing from time to time. A New Name in Glory, Dwelling in Beulah Land. And if Jesus uh, goes with me, I'll go anywhere. So quite a story to this hymn. So you got your page open there, page 86. So sing it along with me. Think about two things. Think about that day that this author uh, was thinking about and meditating upon his Bible. And what a good inspiration for you and me to set even at times of labor or work or whatever, you know, regardless of the circumstances around us, and meditate on the things of the Bible. But most of all, think about Mary Magdalene that day, and even more than that, our Lord, who had risen from the dead for you and me. And think about that day that we'll see him and know him as Mary Magdalene did in that day. So let's sing it. It's called In the Garden. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and He walks with me and He talks with me and He tells me joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we there. None other 
has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him through the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever